Welcome to this Houdini notebook tutorial. This video is part of the Terrain notebook, and today's node is the Height Field Mask by Feature node. So this is a geometry level node, so we can just create a geometry node, dive inside, and over here, we can just create a height field, HF over here. This just creates this giant grid for us. This is a volume. If we take a look over here, you can see that it is a volume. It's made up of voxels. It has a size of 1000 by 1000, and the number of voxels is derived by dividing our size by our grid spacing. So the smaller our grid spacing goes, the higher resolution our height field becomes. Now for this part, I do just need a little bit of detail in our terrain. So all I'm going to do is a height field noise. That looks fine. And we can use a height field remap. This is going to allow us to change the input ranges. So compute range. And then I'm going to drag this up to give us some flat areas. Then we can use a height field erode node. And we'll go into this in another video. But for this one, I'm just going to freeze it at frame 20 and leave the default settings. That's going to take a while to calculate because it is a simulation that it's running. Once we have that, we can go over to the visualization and disable visualize. So we just have a fairly basic terrain over here to work with. Now, let's say that you want to mask out certain areas to define either layers for your terrain or areas in which you want to scatter foliage or rocks, or you want to texture this in some particular way based on the features of this terrain. Well, the way we would go about doing that is by using a mask by feature. Now, there are two mask by feature nodes in Houdini. One is the geometry based one. One is the height field one. We want the height field one. You can filter that out by just typing HF. Okay. So we have this one over here. If we place this down, you will see that we end up with this red area being defined, and that is our mask. Now, if we middle mouse on our mask by feature, you'll see that we have all of these layers over here. Now, I don't want you to worry about any of them. Many of them are generated by the height field erode. The one that I do want to focus on is this mask layer over here. This mask layer is currently being generated by our mask by feature. And over here, it is done using the combine with existing operation of replace. So if there were a mask before, this will now replace the existing one. So what exactly does this node do for us? Well, if we take a look over here, the first things that we have are these slope options. So you can actually see if I disable mask by slope that there's actually no mask being generated if we disable that. But we can choose which features to mask this by. So by default, it is by slope. And slope is just going to be the steepness of a terrain. So if we increase this low end and increase the high end, it'll only give us the steepest areas of our terrain. This might be useful for soloing out areas where we want it to be a rocky face or areas where we don't want foliage to grow, things like that. If we disable that, we can also mask by height. And you will see that it just gives you this thin line. And that's because by default, it's only searching within the range of zero to one in terms of a height. We can compute the range and that will give us the minimum and maximum values for our terrain. And then we can control the values from there. For example, if we want to solo out just the peaks, we can increase the minimum height until we just have the highest points of our terrain, right? So that's masking out everything except the highest points of our terrain. And we're going to disable that and go over to peaks and values. Peaks and valleys is an interesting one for finding the sharpness of particular edges in your terrain. So we're going to go over here and just say compute range. And by default, those values aren't going to work so well for us. So we're going to decrease the max curvature over here. And what you'll see is that it's now giving us these sharp edges. But you may find that that's not very useful, right? Because it's also generating this mess at the bottom for us. That's where combining masks can actually come into the picture. For example, if we also go over here and enable mask by height, then it will combine these two mask operations to give us only the combined output, right? So only the high areas and only the areas of high curvature. You can very easily invert any of these ramps by just clicking over here on the complement ramp option and that will flip it. Now you only have areas of low curvature or the flatter areas of your peaks. Okay, so disable curvature, disable height, and let's take a look at direction. So direction is a fairly self-explanatory one. You can think of it as a ray coming from a particular direction, and any surface that it makes contact with will be added to the mask, right? So by default, it's going to be casting in the positive x direction. But as we change this goal angle, it moves down over there. So now it's casting in positive z. As we keep pushing, it's going to be casting in negative x. As we go beyond 180, it's going to be casting in negative z and then all the way back around to cast in positive x. 
This over here, where we have our angle spread, is just going to define how closely it actually has to match this angle. Again, combining this with other masks is extremely useful. If we mask by height, compute our range, cut out any particularly low-lying areas, and then sharpen it up over here, you can end up with a very directional approach for your peaks. Now, the last one that we're going to look at over here is just mask by occlusion. The way I like to think of this is which areas are least or most exposed, right? So an occluded area is going to be an area that is not very exposed. If we push up the low end of this, you'll see that it sharpens up. And these are going to be the areas which are most exposed, right? So these areas over here might be most exposed to things like environmental factors because there's nothing really occluding them or blocking them. You can see that this big area out here is also exposed because we don't have anything occluding it, right? All of these areas over here are occluded by our cliffs, but the peaks are not going to have that. Additionally, down here, we have a quality for this and it has a view distance. The view distance can be thought of quite literally as the viewing distance. If you looked at this from a closer point, then you would reduce the viewing distance because you can see more detail, right? So as we decrease this, we see more finer detail in the occlusion. If you were further away and you want more general detail, you push up the view distance like that. So this is one of those extremely useful ones over here because you can also do things like narrowing in the range to something like that. And this can give you some really nice details that you can then use further down the line. Okay, so how do we actually use these masks and what are they useful for? So I'm going to create a very basic slope mask over here. And I just want to show you what you might want to use this for. So we can also invert the mask and I'm going to do that because perhaps we want something where all of our terrain is smoothed out except for these cliff faces, right? So let's try that. Let's use a height field blur, so HF blur. And we plug this into the first input, right? That's going to blur everything because it's working on the height layer. But if we use our mask into second input, it's only going to blur the areas that are masked. So as we increase this, you'll see that those areas all blur and smooth out, but we maintain our cliff faces. And if you can't really see this too well, then you can use a mask clear, which is a really useful node. And all it does is just default your mask to a value of zero, right? So it removes that masked value. So as you can see, even in this super basic form, this might be nice for something like a hilly terrain where you have rolling fields of grass, but they are interrupted by these cliff faces. Right, so that's just one way of doing it, where you mask out particular areas and then tell it to only work on certain areas. Right, so that's one way of using the mask. Now, another way to use this mask is to actually convert it into a layer of its own. So an example of this might be if you want to just find these steep areas on your terrain and then use that for texturing. Right, so perhaps you want to use that as a rocky cliff face. Then what we can do over there is once again use the slope, find the steepest areas just like that. Perhaps we want to use occlusion so that it's a bit more detailed, something like that. And now we want to say that, okay, all of that is going to be rock. Well, how do we do that? We use an HF copy layer. So height field copy layer. This over here converts one layer's name into a new layer of another name, right? So if we were to choose one of the existing ones, then our mask would replace whatever we chose as the destination. You can see that it'll say replace existing, so it'll replace whatever we choose as our destination. If we choose one that doesn't exist, for example, you can see here, we have bedrock, sediment, height, debris, and water. Let's add one called cliffs. And now if we middle mouse over here, you'll see we have cliffs. The cool thing is we can now clear that mask. So height field mask clear. And then if we were to visualize this, so HF visualize, we can quickly compute the range. Just make this all a sort of general green color. Then we still have access to that new layer that we created. We can go over here and let's say we want to visualize it as gray. We can just type over here cliffs and there you go, right? We still have our layer that we called cliffs and we can use that for texturing and whatever we need. So if you were to take this into something like Unreal Engine, this will be recognized as a layer. So you'll have cliffs over there recognized as a layer. You can also convert this over here. So height field convert to a piece of geometry. And when you do that, all of these layers get converted to attributes instead. So once again, if I were to use a color node over here and then go ramp from attributes, we can choose our cliffs. And once again, we still have access to that information. So those are the various ways that you may want to use masks. One way is to control certain operations within your height fields. The other way is to copy it to a particular layer and then use that layer for whatever purposes you may have. That may be scattering, that may be texturing, 
that may be for use in a game engine, whatever it may be, you can save out your masks as various layers, and those are the main ways that you'll be using masks. So I do hope that this helped you. These height field nodes tend to all be interconnected in many ways, so these tutorials are slightly different to the other ones that I've been doing, but hopefully it still gives you a good grasp of how we use particular nodes inside of our high field toolset. So thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye.